So today we're going to talk about how to keep a man's interest using these five feminine ways. Now, before I get started, this sucks. Why is it your job to keep a man's interest? Isn't it his job to also keep your interest? Well, let's explore this because what I'm about to share with you, even though the title says five feminine ways, quite frankly, it's five human ways to connect with another person through their heart. And since I speak to women, I'm using the feminine. And if I was speaking to men, I'd use the masculine. And yet this goes equally both ways. Now, are men and women different when it comes to love? In some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. Let me repeat that. In some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. What I mean to say is when you really get granular to a person's human behavior, when you get granular to understanding an individual, you'll get to recognize that there are many similarities between men and women, believe it or not. So now I know, let's go down the list of this because I think you might find the following rather interesting, okay? So we certainly have our instinctual behavior, okay, which is gender-based. Men tend to be provider protectors and hunters, and women tend to be nurturers and gatherers. Those are certainly pretty predominant from our cave person narrative. And a lot of dating advice hinges on that one aspect of human behavior, but we're going to give you about 10 more things to consider that help you understand how to keep someone's attention when you understand the nuances of human behavior. So obviously, number two is our biology. Men and women biologically are a little bit different. Men have penises. Women have vaginas. Oh, my God, I said it. Um, but there are some biological differences between us. Men tend to have substantially more testosterone. Women tend to have estrogen, although that begins to change. As men age, their estrogen levels go up and their testosterone levels go down. I've been told... <laughs> I've been told women grow penises as they age, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, certainly there is the socialization that takes into effect. Boys are treated different than girls. Boys are taught to stuff their emotions. Boys are taught that violence equals masculinity. Football and, and rough sports, that, that's what at least my generation of the baby boomer Gen Xer generation, we were taught that masculinity is more violent. Now, certainly that's shifting for the younger demographic, those Gen Zs, those, um, those millennials and that sort of thing. But it's still very prevalent for those of us in midlife. OK, and girls were traumatized as well, too. You know, have you have you noticed that women's value throughout history has all been based on looks and what they can bring to the table? So it's no wonder we're an emotional, dysfunctional group of beings because of how we were socialized. But here's where it gets really tricky. The imprinting that happens in our childhood. If you're not familiar with love attachment, I highly recommend reading this book, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. If you haven't read the book, Getting the Love You Want by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, understanding something known as the Imago. Now, the books I recommend are listed below. Why this is so critically important is as children, we have been imprinted with either minor or major wounds or traumas minor or major wounds of traumas. And this imprints on how we operate as adults in our lives, depending on how much we've been traumatized. Now, some of you might think, oh, I had a very garden variety childhood, but believe it or not, even those that had garden variety childhoods could have experienced moments of sheer fear or pain or terror that affects you as an adult. It might trigger you as an adult. And you might be thinking, Jonathan, what does this have to do with keeping a man's interest in these five feminine ways? Folks, when you understand human behavior and what I'm about to share with you in a few minutes, you'll understand how there's a bigger puzzle that we have to look at versus this small subsegment that I'm about to share with you. So imprinting can play a huge role 
in how someone shows up in their adult relationships. It's interesting. I've interviewed women who have gone through a breakup and they've told me the experience they had in their relationship. And I often ask them, did your boyfriend have, had, did your boyfriend have a traumatic childhood? And almost in every single case, the answer was yes. I had one woman tell me her boyfriend said his mother was a despicable human being. And I said, how did he heal from that? He didn't heal from that. But that's going to directly affect his capacity to be in a healthy, happy relationship later on down in his life, later, later on in his life. Those experiences we had, that early imprinting. And by the way, the Imago, which I mentioned earlier in the book, Harvell Hendricks, Helen Hunt, why that's so important is we oftentimes choose parents that, or excuse me, choose people in our lives who are similar to one or both of our parents. We are reliving this experience. This is why we have adult traumas. We have young traumas. And by the way, I know the word trauma might seem like you didn't have one, but it's a wound that many of us have experienced. This is why I'm such a big proponent of doing the inner work through self-love, which is a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. By the way, this is my book. All the books are listed below. Number five, our age and our life experience. My demographic I speak to are midlife folks. Do you know that roughly 75% of singles over 45 years old are divorced? Divorce comes with a dramatic unraveling of the tapestry of our life with another human being. And in many cases, that can create significant drama, or excuse me, drama, trauma, trauma, trauma in our lives. Divorce. Maybe you went through a job loss. I went through a significant change where my identity was shattered at age 42 when I lost my high-end corporate job. I was going through a divorce and then the market crash of 2008-2009. By the way, my coffee mug says radical honesty. All the I have a list this is my product radical honesty. There's a link to get my go to my shopping cart. I'd love for you to get a cup that says radical honesty. I'm a, this is radically honest what I'm sharing with you. It goes beyond the narrative that men are supposed to be the leaders of the relationship and you just sit back in your feminine energy and that's all you need to do is just sit in your feminine energy. Even though the title here says feminine, I'm again here to remind everyone that this is about human behavior, not feminine or masculine. By the way, as our age and our life experiences, the older people are, the more life experience they have and it can directly affect their capacity to really connect with their heart. Number six, cultural and religious experiences. Do you know certain cultures? I have a friend of mine. She is of uh, Asian descent. And the Asian culture can be radically tough on kids. As an example, my parents are from the Middle East. My parents were from Istanbul, Turkey. That Mediterranean has its own unique culture. I have friends who are Italian, Jewish, you know, I said uh, culture and religion, or whether or not you're religious. This plays into our psyche of how we operate as beings. And the older we are, this plays even more traumatically and dramatically in our lives and are also our socioeconomic and education. People that grew up with wealth, people who grew up with poverty, certainly education, this plays huge roles. Many of you know I lost a child. There's a picture of Connor right there. You know, sadly, he had a learning disability and he struggled mightily in school. And I would venture to say that that if he had lived, you know, if he was alive today, that would directly affect his capacity to, to be in relationship with another human being. I'm, I'm quasi dyslexic. I, I mix things up in my brain. But our finances, our education plays a role. And whether you were raised poor or you were raised rich and where you're at today plays a huge role in how we interact with one another. And it's important to recognize this and also our physical health and our appearance. For those of us in midlife, look at, I've got a little bit of a dad bod. I don't, I've never had a six pack ab. 
But, you know, I recognize that I, and I use food sometimes as comfort, but our physical health and our appearance, our physical attractiveness. And the sad part is for those of us in midlife, everybody's dating with younger eyes. Everybody is dating with younger eyes. And are you introspective? Do you look inward? Do you actually take ownership of your life? And are you emotionally, do you have emotional skills? Do you have relationship skills? This all plays a part in it. This is why I'm such a big proponent of doing the inner work to learn radical honesty. What I says in my coffee mug again, radical honesty. Folks, to gain a person's interest has nothing to do with feminine or masculine. It has to do with being an emotional grown-up. And what I'm about to share with you are five ways to show up as an emotional grown-up. Number one, I'm going to tell you what keeps a man or woman's interest are people who have agreeable and easygoing personalities. There are a lot of people that just have difficult personalities. They have complaining personalities. They have negative personalities. They have wounded personalities. Those people are very difficult to be in relationship with, and it's very difficult to keep a person's interest if you operate like one of those people. I dated a woman once. It was so hard to pick a restaurant to go out to dinner. She literally complained about every single place. And while I accept, I tolerated it, I actually didn't like that part of her personality. I, I think learning to have an agreeable, gracious, grateful personality is something that's a skill that has to be honed because it's so easy to be, you know, and I've seen this in the early stages of dating. I've seen so many women walk in with resting bitch face, okay? And by the way, you've ex ladies, you've experienced men who are total jerks and assholes. I get it. But easygoing, agreeable personality is almost a necessity if you want to keep a long-term relationship going. Earlier, I mentioned self-love. Self-love isn't just, it isn't self-care. It isn't manicures and pedicures. Self-love is self-respect, self-confidence, self-worth, self-reliance, self-esteem. This is a critically important component if you want to maintain a healthy, happy relationship with someone. Is do you have a sense of your sovereignty? While I'm not a fan of everything in this book, why men love bitches. And by the way, bitch should be titled Babe in Total Control of Herself. Yes. Okay. I don't love everything in this book, but it's an empowerment book to own your sovereignty, to stand into your power and say, I am worthy of a significant relationship. I'm going to tell you something. Dating and relationships is not for the faint of heart. Okay. It's not for the faint of heart. This is something you have to want, not from a desperate place, but you have to be willing to put in Herculean effort. The most important decision you'll ever make in your life is who you're going to choose as a life partner. And today we have this cavalier, ambivalent, ignorant approach. And no wonder people are, not, are miserable out there. And we have a significant percentage of the population that's rather lonely. Self-love is like a vaccination to emotional chaos. Let me repeat that. Self-love is like a vaccination to emotional chaos. And so I invite everyone to do the inner work, the personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. Number three, a woman clearly knows what she wants. She has established her standards. I can tell you women come to me for, by the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Okay. I have women come to me all the time. Jonathan, I know what I want. I know what I want. I know what I want in relationship. And then they go through this proprietary coaching program I created. And can you guess what they say every single time afterwards? Why didn't my parents teach me this? Why didn't I learn this in school? Why didn't I learn this before I married the wrong person? Folks, with, with the amount of differences out in the world, having a clear understanding of who is compatible with you is critically important, is critically important. 
if you don't understand true compatibility, compatibility is like this, but most of the time we're dating like this, okay? Understanding who is compatible with you. One of the things I do with my private coaching clients is we go through their actual dating profile and I actually have them review a man's profile from this premise of beyond the surface of compatibility, okay? To really understand heart-based compatibility, not surface level compatibility. The fourth quality that every human being needs to exhibit if you want to keep someone's interest is boundaries and agreements. Boundaries and agreements. First off, you have to honor your standards that you set before. And then when people don't meet that, well, there, there's going to be differences and frictions with another human being. That's just, that's just natural human behavior. Setting boundaries is critically important. And by the way, I know this title says keep a man's interest. By the way, this only works with emotionally grown up human beings. This doesn't work with the dysfunctional human beings out there. Boundaries don't work. They don't keep, by the way, the, and by the way, many of you have duct tape over your mouth. You're afraid to establish a boundary or set agreements with one another because you're afraid to lose this mediocre relationship to begin with. When you set boundaries with an emotionally grown up person, when you have agreements with an emotionally person based on your standards, that person's going to want to start doing this with you because he's doing, you're doing the same for him and he's doing the same for you. When you establish healthy boundaries, and I like the way Brene Brown talks about boundaries. Boundaries are what's okay and what's not okay for me. So you establish your standards and then you say what's okay, what's not okay for me. And number five, okay, I'm a guy. What's going to keep my interest? Passionate sex, okay? Sex, listen, what's the point of being in a rela romantic relationship if you're not going to have physical intimacy with one another? What's the point? Like, that's the whole point in my, otherwise you just have a roommate. You can get a roommate. So cultivating a passionate sex life is rather critically important to keeping men and women together. It's being mindful from a sexual perspective. It's being mindful from a sexual perspective. It's about establishing a regular routine of physical intimacy. It's about learning your partner's physical desires and what turns them on and, and, and cultivating that together. And yet most humans are so afraid to speak up. In my last relationship, we asked each other, what do you both want? What do we want? Like in the bedroom. And we talked about it. We had a sincere, honest conversation about it. Because two people can be at two different sides of the aisle. It's trying to find that space together. And then making physical intimacy a requirement. Because let's face it, what's the point of being in a romantic relationship? It's sex is part of the biggest is part of the reason why you're going to keep someone's interest long term, short term, short term, long term and all the way around. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. So those five ways to keep a man's or woman's interest, have an easy growing personality, demonstrate self-love, which is self-worth, self-respect, self-confidence, self-esteem. Clearly know what you want. Set those boundaries and agreements. And go out and have a passionate sex life. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me, schedule a discovery call with me. Check out my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, get all the books I recommend. They're listed below. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.